Perfect Campfire Song, Margaritaville. A really, really, of course, very fun song to play, fun to sing, fun to just get in the spirit of the whole thing. But also, we can take this song, this really simple campfire song that you can, of course, play with three chords, okay, four, um, if we throw in a D7, and uh, even five if we want to alternate A's and A7s. But um, what we're going to do in this lesson to kind of dress this up a little bit is that, what I just played there, which was incorporating the lead. Now, we're going to look at the lead in a couple of different ways. One is just playing it as if somebody else is playing the chords. I have tablature to that, and it's very simple. It's played in, in two-part harmony, mostly. <laughs> part that happens, of course, next. Uh, what is it? Anyway, so we're going to take a look at that as if you're playing it with somebody else playing the rhythm, but we're also going to expand that into combining it with the rhythm and making it a solo thing like you heard me just play there better than that. Um, I think. Well, maybe. So uh, that's what's going to be the, the kind of cool part of this lesson, is to, to work on playing your own solo lead rhythm combo part, what we might call a chord solo. Uh, this song, of course, was really is Jimmy's identifying tune, and uh, first appeared in 1977 on Changes in Latitudes, Changes in Attitudes. <laughs> there are a few interesting things about the song. Aside from the fact that it's really easy to play, and this is sometimes the first song I have somebody learn when they're, they, you really only need three chords. And uh, so, very great strumming song for beginners, but uh, anyway. Um, you know who was first, first going to record this? Elvis Presley. Didn't quite make it, unfortunately. Met his uh, demise just before he could uh, get around to recording it. So Jimmy got to do it. That was, that's not, not such a bad deal. And um, the song, again, has just uh, become identifiable with, with Jimmy as his, uh, as his signature tune. It's perfect. I mean, represents uh, at least the illusion, the, the perception of his lifestyle. But uh, it's, you never know. Still, really fun song to play. A little bit of confusion as to what he's even singing. Is it Wasted or Wastin'? Who cares? That's probably the most the most important thing there. So um, we're going with Wasting this time because that's what's printed on the album jacket. But as time goes on, it doesn't even matter. So uh, that's it. Let's uh, what we're going to do in this lesson. Is I'm just going to talk briefly about the strumming, but mostly about how to add the lead to the strumming because um, the strumming is so simple. Although we'll also add a little bit, we'll talk a little bit about adding a little percussion to it, um, like in the changes in latitudes, as, as a matter of fact. So, okay, let's get into looking at Margaritaville. 
Let's start with the campfire version of the song. The perfect campfire song. You can play the song with three chords. Take a look at my chart. I've got Ds, Gs, A7s. Later on, there's D7s. We can leave out the D7. And if, so with those three chords, D, G, and A7, and the A7 could be an A2, but I have A7 because it's even easier to play than A. So hopefully you know the fingerings for those chords. But folk strum pattern that the folk strumming pattern that I like to teach people, I sometimes call it the folk pattern, but I sometimes forget what I'm trying to call it and uh, stumble over the words, but um, is the first strumming pattern I really try to teach people. Down, down, up, up, down, up. We take Margaritaville to the next level by making the strum a little bit more percussive. Two things we're going to add in this. And the percussive strum is one of them. Now we're going to play the same chords, and again, at this point, you can play D or D. You know where you can, I'm sure you can play all four chords, and you can um, make the changes pretty smoothly. So, what we're going to try to do here is work on muting the strings so that our second down is more of a snare drum sound. Let's take a look at the page of tablature that has the lead. Now the, the opening, the intro, I'll we'll talk about the intro first. We're going to be talking about this, the intro and the lead actually, just as if you're the lead guitar player, somebody else is strumming the rhythm for you. So that's what's going on in this chapter. We're going to look at uh, what I've printed out, or what you've printed out, what I wrote out for you. And the main things that happen in this lead are that we've got pairs of notes that are thirds apart. Now a third in music is two notes that skip a letter. So when on a D in a D chord, the three notes that make up a D chord are D, F sharp, and A. And the what we're going to be doing is playing notes that are on the first and second strings that are always a third apart. So the first pair of notes is at the fifth and seventh frets. You have to look at look carefully at the timing or pay attention to whether a note is on a beat or on an and to make sure you want to do the same thing with your right hand that you do when you're strumming the song. Keep up this constant motion. You don't want to do this. Not only did that sound terrible, it wasn't rhythmically in time. Where So I need you need to make sure that this hand is doing the same thing that the rhythm guitar player is doing. That's the sound, that's, that's our intro. Let's try creating a chord solo out of this. A song, uh, an arrangement where we're playing the chords and the lead. These types of things are done finger picking sometimes, done with a pick sometimes. In the case of Margaritaville, we're shooting for this sound. What we, gotta, what we have to do is combine our lead with our strumming. So on the very first beat of the intro, do the intro first, Instead of just having the two notes at the fifth and seventh frets of the first and second strings, we need to add the third string in there as well so that we get, so we can strum all four notes of a D chord here. We're going to slide up into that and then drop back to the third fret, but we can't hear this. They can't all go back there. So your third finger has to lighten up and kill the, second, the third string so that we get this. Not this, and then come back. So it's going to sound like this. Then we're going to do the same thing, but we need to hear a G chord. And so what we're going to do is open up. Now we're going to take your third finger off and really cleanly hit the top three strings. So we do want to hear that G in here, giving us the sound of a G chord, because that would be the chord in the second measure of the intro. 